Hey everyone, welcome back to a brand new semester of The Common Thread, the official podcast of the Howard Thurman Center. I'm Amanda Dowd. I'm Tarif Ahmed. And I'm Greg Wilson. And we are joined today by a very special guest. Judy Smith is a 1980 COM graduate and the top crisis management advisor in the country, having worked with Monica Lewinsky, the family of Chandra Levy, and Kobe Bryant, among many others. She also gained invaluable experience working on the 1991 Gulf War, the Los Angeles riots, and the confirmation hearings of Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas. And yes, she is the inspiration behind ABC's Scandal, starring Carrie Washington, for which she is also the exec co-executive producer. So so thank you for coming on, Judy. Thank you for having me. It's good to be back home. Yeah. Great. Back to your <laughs> alma mater. Yes. So we were curious about, you know, we know that you started out in PR at mm -hmm. COM. I did. And you also have a law degree. Yes. So what got you into crisis management exactly? Well, it, it's interesting because it's not a, uh, it's not a direct path, but I started out when I graduated doing just communications and public relations. Mm -hmm. And uh, I always say this, it, it was very um, encouraging to, my first job was working at a nonprofit, mm -hmm. and that was great. And at the time though, I must say I didn't think it was great because I wasn't getting paid any money, <laughs> and, you know. Um, but it was good because their funds were limited. I had such a unique opportunity to do everything. I mean, I was writing speeches, I was writing press releases, I mean, I was doing everything. Mm -hmm. And so it was really good preparation ground for me. Mm -hmm. I, you know, it's one of those things, and they say hindsight is twenty twenty. And right. so it was good because by the time, you know, the, the next job came up, I was very much, you know, very much prepared for it. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, started down a regular path of communications, just doing what, when you get out of college, you yeah. would do, you know, mm -hmm. basic communication and PR jobs. And just slowly over the years developed a specialty for, for crisis. Yeah. So what made you, I mean, why do you want to do crisis? What is it that you love about oh, your particular it's area of expertise? Be yeah, it's a stressful <laughs> job, I would imagine. Or exciting. Yes. It's, yeah. it's not you, it's your client. <laughs> Well, I would tell you, it's really exciting because, I mean, similar probably to what you see on, on the show, mm -hmm. it's exciting because I can wake up one day, every day, and, you know, 9 o'clock, I have a CEO calling because he thinks he's getting fired. We have a celebrity that is getting kicked off a show. Mm -hmm. We have a, you know, hostile takeover, and that's all before noon. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know what I mean? So it's always exciting. It's um, it's never boring. And I, I know this sounds probably corny, and I'm sure this is probably what, you know, parents tell you. But <laughs> you, you really want to do something you enjoy, and I'm, I'm very passionate about it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I really do it because I, I, I like helping people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And... Um, you know, I that's what we do. I don't try to do a whole lot of other things. I try to do that one thing, and I, I try to do that the best I possibly can. Absolutely. Yeah. So I guess you're referring to it as helping people. Do you ever really run into any ethical dilemmas about, say, there's somebody who's, who's done something. Yeah. You know they made a mistake. Mm -hmm. You're helping them. You're not going to try to necessarily get them out of something that they're responsible for. So how yeah. does that sort of work itself out? Well, you know what? I, I think, look, I, I think that we all make mistakes. Mm -hmm. um, I think we all do. And the only difference a lot of times that I see in high profile cases is just that, that they are uh, mm -hmm. high profile. Yeah. And you know, you read about them in the paper and you see them on TV. Mm -hmm. But the fact of the matter is that, that at its core, we all do that. We're just lucky enough that we don't see ourselves, you know, on national <laughs> television making right. the mistake. Like, right. I mean, think about it. What if you guys were driving and you know, too much to drink, and you got arrested. Mm -hmm. um, that happens to celebrities sometimes, mm -hmm. right? And uh, and then all of a sudden, it's on TV. Mm -hmm. yeah. But those are, the, the, you know, what I mean, those yeah. are com those are common mistakes. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that that I think is important, whether you are uh, an everyday person or a high profile person or celebrity is, you know, you have to take ownership of your mistake. Mm -hmm. I do think that the public, it will be interesting to see what you guys think about it, I think the public is very forgiving. Mm -hmm. I think that if you sort of, you know, as my mom would say, fess up, mm -hmm. yeah. make a mistake, own it, fess up, um, and, you know, apologize, uh, I think 
I think the American public is very forgiving. Mm -hmm. And I think you'd be the best one to tell us, right? It seems like we have one of the shortest memories of all time. The American we do. Public. Yeah. We do. It's yeah. like a minute, and there's something else. Yeah. Yes, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And there's a yeah. new crisis, and yeah. people are like, oh, yeah, what? Huh? yeah. And yeah. and you were asking, you know, about stress. I mean, I've been doing crisis for about 20 years or so, and. This is a weird answer, but it seems normal to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I it it's sort of it's what I do, and it's twenty four seven. So it's, it doesn't. It's a yeah, yeah, I mean, the sort of stress becomes normal. If that yeah. makes mm -hmm. sense. It's a normal way for me to you know to to, to live my life. Right. Basically. Well, I'm actually studying public relations, and one of the things they oh they, yeah yeah one of the things oh, they, they sort of constantly preach is the idea of transparency. So is that what you're sort of saying that? We're not in the business of lying to people anymore and trying to make things seem like they're not or they are what they're not. So you're just well, yeah, sort of be I mean, with everything. well, no, you should. Uh, you should. I mean, a whole host of things. One is in dealing with the media and the press. If you're mm -hmm. in public relations, your reputation depends on it. So if you're calling or dealing with the Boston Globe or the New York Times, and you know you're talking about a client. Um, is your reputation. And for me, I, I don't lie to reporters. You know, reporters will, will not take you at face value if you, if you lie to them. So I think that's important. I think the other thing that's important is that when you are dealing with a client that is in a crisis, um, it's also important as well for um, that client uh, to tell the truth and as we were talking about sort of own the problem. I mean how many times probably have you guys seen you know somebody on uh, TV or read something and you probably said oh god I don't believe it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? You yeah. know. Well, you know. Anything Charlie Sheen says. <laughs> 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 yeah. Now what did you guys think about that? Was that sort of a train wreck you guys thought was waiting to happen? What, what did you think about that situation? You know I think that maybe is a little bit different at least to me it was yeah. in other crises because it was it was clear that he was dealing with some serious mental issues. Yeah. You know, it yeah, wasn't yeah. like he was just covering up something bad. I mean, he right. clearly was not. Right. right. What was worse than that was the Mel Gibson tapes that got released yeah, that when was, he was that on was the phone. Oh, what do you think about that? I'm just like, you know, after the first time it happens, why would you call her back? <laughs> right. <laughs> Where's your agent? Why isn't he's she had, like in charge of your phone? Years. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, I'm sure the clients make all the difference too, right? Someone who actually wants to work with you to fix this crisis well, versus yeah. someone who's just like, I don't care. I'm just going to do what well, I want. Well, that's right. That's exactly right. Because, I mean, if you want to sort of get on the road of rehabilitation, mm -hmm. you have to, you know, you have to, you have to go through it, basically. Yeah. Have you ever had a client that just wasn't willing to take your advice and expected you to just say a few lies and fix it kind of thing? Well, they would have the wrong person. Mm -hmm. People don't hire me for that because okay. it's not, it's... You know, it's not, it's not what I do. So you are limited in who you choose to work with? Well, I mean, I get to choose, which, mm -hmm. I, you know, which I think is good. I mean, most of our business is from referral, and that's mm -hmm. good, because I think then that says something very good about the, you know, the reputation and the brand that, that we have um, built up. But, you know, there are some clients, I mean, we were talking about this earlier, where um, we're, they were teasing me because they said, you know, they call you the fixer. And, you know, I said there's some things that are just not fixable. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's usually not what people want to hear, but, but that just happens to be the truth. Mm -hmm. So yeah. how do you decide what cases to take and what cases not to take? Yeah, I don't really take... Um, I, I like to work on cases where I really think that, uh, that I can make a difference and we mm -hmm. can really help that person navigate through that crisis, whether it's, you know, big or small. I mean, we work with a lot of, um, you know, a lot of clients from, you know, corporations, celebrities, associations, and it's a, across a broad spectrum of work, but you want to be able to um, know that you have identified what the client's goals and objectives are, sort of where they want to end up. You know, mm -hmm. we usually start at that point from the beginning, mm -hmm. and uh, and I think that makes that that makes a difference. Now, yeah. I have a logistical type question. Sure. Let's say some crisis happens. You know, someone's drinking in the middle of the night and yeah. they hit someone, or there's a crisis. Yes. Do you get contacted in the middle of the night, or do they wait until like nine in the morning to get? No, this no. There's there's no such thing as so we always <laughs> say this. That, <laughs> You know, crisis is not on a nine to five schedule. Yeah. I mean, it is it is truly twenty four, twenty four seven. Mm -hmm. So I always keep my cell phone on all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh wow. Well, what has been maybe your favorite 
case to work on? Or if you can't give specifics, what about your favorite type of case? Yeah, I guess I don't have a favorite. I, I, I must say, I mean, they, I find them all interesting and, and challenging. Um, you know, certainly when you're dealing with cases that have a, you know, national or international perspective, the, you know, there's, there's a big uh, impact. But at the same time, you know, there are cases when you are dealing with, you know, individuals and that impact is, you know, it's just the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like when you're dealing with individuals who are suddenly in the public eye, but mm -hmm. who necessarily like haven't done anything wrong, like for example, you know, the family of a murder victim mm -hmm. that you have dealt mm -hmm. with, is it more just about training them how to deal with the media? And how to answer questions, or well, it, it's part of it. It depends on the it depends on the case, but um, you know, certainly in a case like that, yes, you want to talk to them about uh, dealing with the media. Mm -hmm. But in the particular example that you gave, you also want to be very proactive because when you are trying to when you're dealing with law enforcement and you're trying to you know, catch the person that is responsible for it, mm -hmm. you have to constantly think of ways to keep that issue in front of the public. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why a lot of times when you see, you know, missing cases, mm -hmm. um, you see the parents and the family right out there and, and people are doing things every single day to, you know, to keep the public interested in mm -hmm. it. Yeah. What is your general, like, rule of thumb for dealing with crisis? I mean, you mentioned own up to it. Fess up to uh, it. Facts. facts. Knowing the facts are Knowing very, facts. very helpful, <laughs> yes. So honesty and full disclosure from your client, I'm guessing. Yes, that would, that, that's key. That's yeah. key. You know, and facts are a tricky thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, it has to be, I think, facts that are the hardcore facts, not how we wish them to be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Exactly. And not how we want them to be. Mm -hmm. It's really the facts. Right. And, uh, and I think that's important. Right. Yeah. Definitely. Would you... Um, I'm sure there is a difference between working with, let's say, a corporation versus yeah. an individual celebrity. Oh, what are some of the differences and like ups and downs of each? Well, I mean, it's they're similar, but um, they're 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 things that are different and things that are similar. I think with an individual and a corporation, you both have a brand and you both have a reputation to protect. Mm -hmm. um, a corporation, in particular, a public corporation. There's a lot at stake. It's consumer, um, whether the consumer is going to continue to trust you, whether or not the stock is going up <laughs> or going down. Mm -hmm. Those are a whole host of considerations, you know, that you not necessarily have if you're dealing with an individual. Mm -hmm. You know, an individual could be concerned, say, like a sports figure. Uh, same thing, could be concerned, obviously, with their brand and their image. But also on the financial side, because a lot of athletes, you know, particularly some of the Olympics and, you know, they live off of endorsements. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, that's important as yeah. well. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, based off your rap sheet, all the people you've worked yes, with. Yes, rap sheet, that's something, right? <laughs> it seems, it seems it's long. Like, yeah, I mean, it's lengthy. It seems Those like are the only people that you know about. Oh, wow. Exactly. Most of the clients that we, uh, that we have, you don't know about, which yeah. is good. Uh, <laughs> But it just simply means, you know, on some cases, the clients want you to serve as a spokesperson. You yeah. know, some media calls, you have to speak on their behalf. Um, or, they, you know, they might want you to do interviews and that sort of thing. And there, mm -hmm. there's just so many cases that we've been involved in behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, so, so based off that, people look to you, they trust you. It's like you have it broken down to a science. Is this is how we're going to fix it. And based off of... Reading the description of your book, that's what it seems like you're you're finally revealing the signs or the yeah. method behind your madness. So. I, I think so. I mean, it's interesting because a lot of times, you know, in crisis, people call me when the crisis has started. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and part of what I tried to do in in the book, um, it's called Good Self, Bad Self, mm -hmm. is to look at you know 20 years of crisis experience and really put it in a book to try to give you know, everyday people advice on how to deal with it. Mm -hmm. Because crises and problems are just all relative. Mm -hmm. I mean, it could be simply you guys not getting a job that you wanted or somebody mm -hmm. else not getting promoted or a bad breakup. I mean, any of those kinds of things, those are real problems mm -hmm. and real issues. So mm -hmm. it shouldn't be minimized. And what it does, what the book does, is really look at things like denial 
or ego or fear. Mm -hmm. Those kinds of things that can help contribute to a crisis if you don't deal with it up front. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. How did your book come about? Did Were you approached by a publisher, or was it something that you kind of had in the back of your mind for Well, a while? you know, it's one of those things where um, you say you guys are probably uh, not old enough for this, but you <laughs> say that, I mean, I have been talking about writing a book for so long, mm -hmm. and um, just finally got it done. Yeah. <laughs> finally got it done. Yeah. Yeah. Did you have a ghostwriter on it, or was it all you? I mean, you have a lot of writing experience. Yeah, I know. I mean, there are a lot of people that helped and, mm -hmm. and you know, and, and contributed. Mm -hmm. um, but in terms of the the core of the book, it is really those experiences, you know, that, that I really, really wanted to share. Yeah. So writing it must have given you a lot of time to reflect about everything you've done. So what would you say has been sort of the most rewarding about your experience in the field, most rewarding experience within the field? Oh, um... That's sort of hard. Um, I don't know if I could pinpoint one. I, I think the, the most rewarding is really seeing people get past the crisis. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a, I was just doing an interview earlier, and there's a dedication to the book, and it's dedicated to all the readers, mm -hmm. you know, which talks about sort of navigating your way and getting past crisis and problems and issues and knowing that there's a a second act waiting on the other side. Yeah. Well, besides your book, you do have a show that was inspired oh, by you. A show, yes. <laughs> no, I actually, I started watching the show just last season because yeah. I thought it was good and I love Grey's Anatomy and Private Practice. It is by the same creator, Shonda yes. Rhimes. So when, you know, they told us you were coming, they're like, oh yeah, she inspired Skindle. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know it was based on a real person. Yes, yes. But how exactly did that come about? Did you just like get a phone call from Shonda Rhimes saying oh, hi? Oh, no, 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 no. Well, actually it came really from the book. Oh, See, it okay. Took a there you long. go. It came from the book. <laughs> okay. And um, my book agent introduced me um, to some agents, and they set up meetings with different TV producers. And you know, people had um, mentioned probably over the course of ten or fifteen years, you ought to do a TV show. You ought to do a TV show. And you know, it just I, I did, just didn't really think about it. So the book really brought that on. Mm -hmm. um, you know, met with her for about an hour and a half, almost two hours, which was supposed to be a quick 10 or 15 minute meeting. Yeah. And, you know, met with some other folks and just thought she was, she was the perfect match for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, do you ever look at things that are happening in the news and just like scratch your head? Oh, I'm screaming at the TV all the time. Like, I look at Mitt Romney <laughs> and I'm just like, where is this PR? <laughs> Why is he loose? <laughs> you, I am not, I'm the worst person in the world to watch the news with. Mm -hmm. Really. I am screaming at the TV like, oh my God, I can't believe this is happening. <laughs> or, you know, it's, it's always commentary. But, but I will say this though. Having said that, you have to be careful because you never know what the facts are in a crisis. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you know what I mean? And so they always say that, you know, I try not to uh, Monday morning quarterback, as they say, because you really don't know the facts. You know, sometimes when we're involved in crisis and I, you know, I'm listening to people uh, doing commentary about it or talking about it. And it's so far off the mark, mm -hmm. and it's only because that they don't, you know, they don't know all the facts, basically. Mm -hmm. And there's no reason why they should, because they're not public. Yeah. <laughs> um, but but I, oh, I'm always trying. To, I always try to be mindful of that. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, so now what's what's sort of unique is. Now that your light, your life is sort of now in the public light. Yes. It's a TV yeah. show. So yes. It's a role uh, reversal a bit yeah, for you. Oh, no, it attention. is. We were talking about earlier about um, doing things, you know, out of your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. And, you know, usually when I'm on television, I am defending my client. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about uh, a particular issue. And, you know, obviously because of the... The show, and of course, we have second season coming up on Thursday. <laughs> Very exciting. Um, you know, I'm talking about my work and talking about myself, so you know, it's it's an adjustment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Is there? How... I have to do all sorts of crazy things, like you know, wear makeup all during the course of the day. Uh... All that kind of stuff. <laughs> how accurate to your life is it? I mean, it's inspired by you, yeah. but how much of it is actually? Well, you know what she's done. Shonda Rhimes, I think, has done a really good job at. 
um, taking that sort of high profile, wire act, crisis, crazy world that we live in and dramatized it for television. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they, the, one of the first questions that I got early today was, okay, you know, did you sleep with the president? <laughs> no, I had to get that out the way. <laughs> did not, did not. But, um, you know, television, you, it has to, it has to entertain you. Mm -hmm. And what I try to focus on is bringing a level of authenticity to the crisis that's occurring doing the show, how that crisis is handled, how Olivia is handling that mm -hmm. crisis. Um, and that's, that's sort of the, you know, what I, what I try to bring to the mm -hmm. table. For those of you who don't know, Olivia Pope is the main character of the series, and that's who Jason Yes, is. and she's played yeah. by the fabulous Carrie Washington. Oh, I love her. Isn't she great? She is great. Yeah. She does a really good job, like, of, you know, just being so intense about it. Yes, and, yes, and yes, yes, her yes. Job, yes. So. No, she does. I'm being very nice and relaxed, but... Chris will tell you who's been with me for 10 years. It's pretty intense. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, is there anything else you want to tell us or add to it? I mean, we've had no, a good just thank you, you so much for, for, for having me yeah. here. It's, it's good to be uh, back home, and, yeah. and thanks to everybody for being so welcome. Yeah. Definitely. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. thanks. Thank thanks. It's been good. Well, awesome. Scandal airs on ABCs on Thursday night, so everybody tune in. The second season yes. does premiere watch this it, week. It. And try to check out my book. Yes, Good Self, Bad Self. It is available at the Barnes & Noble in Kenmore oh. on campus. I do know that. Okay. <laughs> Go yes. check it out. Yes, online, Amazon. Yeah, yes. but thank you for joining us on thank The Common you. Thread, the official podcast of the Howard Thurman Center. It was a pleasure to have you, Judy. Oh, thank you guys for having me. Yeah. Yeah. appreciate it. Well, I'm Amanda Dow. This is Tarif Ahmed. And I'm Greg. And we'll see you next time. Thanks, everybody.